Hey, what's happening, guys? If you take a look at this circuit here, and if you look over here, you're going to see an occasional pulse come by. And what's happening here is we've created an A-stable multi-vibrator. Are you with me now? <laughs> the way it works is super simple. The base of the right-hand transmitter is connected to the left-hand capacitor. The right-hand transistor is connected, or the left-hand transistor, base of the left-hand transistor is connected to the right-hand capacitor. And because these capacitors, even though they have the same value, because of manufacturing tolerances, they won't be exactly the same. One will charge and discharge faster than the other, and that will set off this multi-vibrator. Where this light comes on and then that one comes on so how long are we looking here one one thousand two one thousand three one thousand four one thousand five uh, about four and a half seconds and that's controlled here with the RC circuit part the 1k here and the one microfarad here for instance if we were to make these smaller stop and then restart our simulation you see we've changed our RC constant and everything is well it's 10 times faster but we're going to stick to a slower thing let me show you what I have in mind okay so here's the circuit drawn up getting ready to make it into a PCB you see it's pretty much the same thing I didn't flip that one around so we got a little extra hadinky going on there <laughs> so now you're having a look here at the design of the board itself you can see from the top here where I put in a little bit of this of a description as to what's going on I think that's probably gonna end up being too small but we'll see what happens so here's the 3d rendering and these are gonna be one microfarad by the way otherwise it's going to take 10 minutes or more for them to oscillate I can never get this right it needs like a reset button on it like some sort of a augmented reality game all right all right enough of this nonsense let's order some boards you and I both know it doesn't get any easier ordering boards and doing it like this from PCB way PCB in some quote quick order upload your Gerber there it is a stable got our boards we're getting five don't worry about anything else there make them out of our four we don't need any Aluminum for heat sinking 1.6 is fine. Track spacing, hole size. We want green and white. We don't need edge connectors. We don't need gold, but if you got extra gold, you know who's going to say no to gold, right? <laughs> and then all we need to do is come over here and choose our shipping. U.S. Post Office works for me $12.52. Let's get these ordered. So the boards are in. About two weeks for the U.S. Post Office. There are faster routes available if you need your stuff quicker. All right, let's go make one. All right, so I've got everything we're going to need laid out here. We've got our LEDs, transistors, current limiting resistors for the LEDs, our circuit resistors, capacitors. Yeah, we should be good to go. There's only a few things here, so I'm not going to get a vice or anything we're just gonna use some blue tack to hold things in place and we might as well start with <clears throat> excuse me these 1k resistors which are gonna limit the current coming into our capacitors and also into the transistors And it's going to form part 
or an RC circuit. If you're new to electronics, the RC circuit is a resistor capacitor circuit <clears throat> and it's used in timing because a certain resistor and a certain capacitor are always going to go through the same time period of charging and discharging the capacitor. So it's just a handy little way to make some nice timing circuits. Now, that's way too small for my eyes, but I have instruction, well not instruction, but a little description of what's going on there with the board. All right, let's get ready and start some soldering. Pardon the glare. Not too much I can do about it, you know. We want to be able to see in here. So what I'm doing first is just soldering down one side of the resistors. Then I'll make sure they're sitting pretty. Nope. This one doesn't want to. There we go. Good. We'll solder up the other side. As you can see, the smooches on there, I have already pre uh, coated them with Uncle Rob's magic solder fluck, flux, magic solder flux and fish seasoning. Although, I just stick to the flux part. Alright, while you weren't looking, I just went ahead and put in the other two resistors. Let's put in our capacitors next. And yeah, these are marked for 10 microfarad. I'm going to put ones in. 10 is going to be a little bit slow. I'm like blind here. There we go. There's one. And two. And once again, I will just solder one of each. To make sure we got them laying how we want. And they are. So I can just come back and solder the other one. Try and keep things looking neat. You know what they say, neatness counts. Spelling counts. Alright, transistors. Any good old NPN will do, you know me. I am the 2222 guy. I do dislike these tiny little footprints though. It can be way too easy, too easy to short the base to one of the other pins. So I will do the outside first. I'm going to do the same the other and give this plenty of time to cool. When you're dealing with silicon junction devices, heat is the worst thing you could do. So, 
If you're a car guy, you've probably heard of the term dwell. Well, if you're an old car guy, I don't think new cars have to set a dwell anymore, do you? But anyway, it's, it's the same with soldering. It means like time on target, basically. And when you're dealing with something heat sensitive, like an integrated circuit, which is what this is, you want to be very careful to keep your dwell time as low as possible. And, you know, you might even be a little counterintuitive as to how you go about it by turning your iron up. A shorter heating period is better, or a shorter heating period at a higher temperature is better than staying on the component for a minute or two at a lower temperature because you're giving heat the chance to spread. It's like when you tack weld something. The whole thing's not super hot like when you've welded the whole thing because you're just getting in there, you're hitting it, and you're gone. Right? Well, I just went ahead and saved us some time and finished soldering that up. I put the uh, circuit diagram on there. Putting stuff that small is just not the greatest idea in the world, but hey, we got it on there, right? There we have it. About a four and a half second time and everything seems to be working. So hopefully this will give the kids an idea of how the RC time constant works and get them a little bit further. So if you guys like this, I hope you give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share. And don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this. Big thanks to you guys for watching this. That's it. I'm out. Peace.